On August 27th, 2019, the first vehicle of the Starship test program took flight and made headlines around the world. Starhopper, little more than a flying test stand for a Raptor engine, flew to a height of 150 meters before gracefully descending and touching down on the landing pad a few meters away. Let's look at the story of how it came to be, how it lost its nose, and why it's still standing in Starbase today. This is the history of Starhopper. In December of 2018, users on the NASA Spaceflight Forum started discussing a new structure at the Boca Chica build site, which was initially referred to as a water tower. An early picture posted to the NASA Spaceflight Forum by Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal, showed the tower standing in front of the only tent that was present on site at the time. The user Johnny Hinbos posted a long theory about why this might hold more than just water after all, and is in fact a big falcon hopper, which was confirmed just days later. Though hilariously, it was in fact built by a water tower company. Elon Musk tweeted a picture of the structure with a caption saying, quote, Stainless steel starship. In it, the main tank of Starhopper's structure was visible next to a nose cone, which ultimately was never used for flight. But we'll save that for later. All of this happened just weeks after Elon announced that SpaceX would no longer pursue a reusable second stage for their Falcon 9 rocket, instead opting to accelerate BFR, which was the name of the Starship system at that time. In that same tweet is the now notorious mention of a quote, delightfully counterintuitive design change. It wasn't long before we found out what that change was, a switch from carbon composites to 300 series stainless steel, which showed great promise in terms of price, availability, strength at cryogenic and high temperatures, as well as ease of manufacturing, which allowed for much faster iteration on prototypes. In the next few days, the beefy steel tank would grow more and more, while the main methane and liquid oxygen tanks were built. Unlike current Starship prototypes, which have a tank wall thickness of 4mm, Starhopper's tanks were made with 12mm thick steel. That's nearly half an inch. It also received bulky, fixed legs without any retraction mechanisms or the intention of saving weight. It is perhaps this extremely robust construction that has resulted in Starhopper surviving not only its own test campaign, but all subsequent Starship test launches, including proximity to five test vehicles exploding nearby. On January 5th, 2019, this first prototype of the Starship program received three Demo Raptor engines. While it never had the opportunity to fly with a three-engine configuration, and these engines were in fact referred to by Elon as, quote, a blend of Raptor development and operational parts, it was the first time the public would see three Raptor engine-like structures next to each other on a vehicle. In retrospect, this seems more like a fit check of Raptor parts, and to make sure that all three engines fit well into the structure, which at this point in time, still had a three-engine flight planned. The stacking of the nose cone onto the vehicle followed a few days later, which led to the first sight of a fully stacked Starhopper prototype. The plan in early 2019 was to fire up Starhopper in, quote, four to eight weeks, which ended up being another example of Elon time. Ultimately, it would take them six months from that date to conduct the first two flights. Around this time, Elon confirmed on Twitter that the planned test campaign would be incremental, similar to SpaceX's previous hopper vehicles, like Grasshopper and Falcon 9R. These vehicles were used to learn about and develop technology for the vertical landing and reuse of Falcon 9 first stage boosters that we now see is commonplace. The difference between them being, Starhopper was a design meant to mimic the second stage of the Starship launch system while Grasshopper was a first-stage test prototype. You may not know that Grasshopper is still standing outside of SpaceX's McGregor, Texas engine testing facility today, while the follow-up vehicle, which was known as F9R, had a different fate. Only time would tell which of the two outcomes was in store for Starhopper. Late January marked the unfortunate end for Starhopper's nose cone. 50 mile an hour winds blew the nose over and it was destroyed. While at this time, Elon indicated it would be repaired, that never happened. The nose cone section that was built after that turned out to be for a new, quote, orbital starship vehicle, which would later be called Mark 1. The good news about the weather-related incident was that the tank section suffered no damage. At around the same time, Preparation work at the launch site two miles down Highway 4 increased significantly. On March 8th, Starhopper rolled out to its new home at the launch site ahead of its testing and flight campaign. The plan was to outfit the vehicle with the real Raptor engine one week later and then start a campaign to fire up the first Starship test vehicle ever. Surprisingly, that Raptor engine arrived sooner than originally thought, after only three days. 
On March 14th, Starhopper saw the first of many tests with the vehicle venting out of its tank body. This might have been an early pneumatic proof test to ensure its tanks were able to hold pressure. This same type of testing is observable even on today's vehicles. Gaseous nitrogen is loaded into the vehicle to check for leaks and verify the integrity of its pressure vessels. That test was an apparent success, with Raptor engine SN2 getting installed the next day. After more fueling and tanking tests in the next few days, Starhopper finally breathed its first burp with a Raptor engine pre-burner test on March 25th. In this very early episode of Texas Tank Watching, Mary posted a video to the NASA Spaceflight YouTube channel which showed the pre-burner spinning up. The test seemed to be successful as Starhopper was chained down the next day in preparation for a first static fire test with a single Raptor engine. It would, however, take some time to finally get the first static fire test right. Elon confirmed on Twitter that teams at SpaceX had issues with ice forming in the pre-valves of the engine after a series of aborted and unsuccessful tests. Finally, on April 3rd at 8 p.m. local, Fire emerged from below Starhopper, and its Raptor engine ignited its main combustion chamber in a successful first-ever static fire test. Elon confirmed on Twitter that this was a successful test, and a second static fire was performed just days later on April 5th. This time, it hit the limit of its tethers, which meant the chains holding it to the ground prevented the vehicle from climbing any higher into the air. Around this time, Elon also first acknowledged the name Starhopper for the vehicle, in a tweet with a fancy picture of the vehicle attached. After the two successful static fires, Raptor engine serial number 2 was removed, most likely for inspections, and Starhopper was once again engineless. The rest of April, May, and June followed these tests without any more static fires. Elon confirmed they didn't remove the engine because of damage, but in preparation for untethered hover tests. Of course, work on the vehicle during this time did not stop. A lot of work was done on the plumbing and tank farm, and Starhopper also got some fancy new shoes in the form of crush cores that would work as shock absorbers during landings. Starhopper also received a set of cold gas thrusters for orienting itself during flight. On May 22nd, Elon increased the adrenaline in the bodies of tank watchers everywhere yet again with a tweet that confirmed SpaceX planned to do the first hop test in just 10 days. A tanking test on May 24th without a Raptor engine was conducted. Then, on the 1st of June, a Raptor engine, serial number 4, was delivered and installed on Starhopper, though it was removed just hours later. The next engine that would get them ready for flight was Raptor serial number 6, after a delay of over a month. The flight profile for the first flight was also confirmed by Elon a day later. Starhopper would attempt to fly 20 meters up, translate sideways, and touch down in the launch area again. The landing pad would not be used for this flight, which was confirmed in another tweet. A gimbal test of the Raptor engine was performed prior to the flight test. In this, the engine would move and wiggle around as a test of the thrust vector control system. Mary captured a video of this happening. With chains still attached, a second pre-burner test, the first with Raptor serial number 6 attached to the vehicle, was performed on July 15th, followed by a static fire test on the 16th. The test was marked by Starhopper being engulfed in a huge fireball just seconds after ignition due to a fuel leak. Thankfully, though, the next day, it looked as fine as ever. That was confirmed, as so many things are, by a series of tweets from Elon, in which he said that Starhopper was fine and the flight test was still on for the next week. On July 25th, SpaceX started a stream called 20 Meter Starhopper Test, which showed the last few minutes before T0 before the first Starhopper hop attempt. Sadly, this test was aborted at engine ignition, but at least Starhopper was able to show off its potential for a future career as a flamethrower during the abort. Elon later confirmed that the propellant was not in the right conditions for flight, hence the abort. The big day would arrive just a day later on July 26, 2019. Starhopper leapt off the launch pad and in a few seconds flew up to 18 meters, just shy of the 20 meter goal. It then translated to its designated landing spot and performed a soft touchdown, all using Raptor serial number 6. After a small fire that started at the launch pad was extinguished, Elon confirmed that the 200 meter hop was now planned for, quote, in a week or two. The next day, in Mary's photographs, it was visible that Starhopper was in good shape overall. Only the crush cores at the end of the legs suffered some damage, and that was to be expected. Just a day after its hop, Starhopper was already moved back to the launch pad on an SPMT or self-propelled modular transporter. As Chris Bergen on NASA Space Flight Forums confirmed that the current plan was to retire Starhopper after the next flight and jump to the next Starship prototype, called Mark 1. Unfortunately, there was to be one more delay in the schedule, as the FAA did not grant the launch license for the 200-meter hop. 
In the following days, Elon gave a few updates about the current status of the launch license, saying on August 15th that they, quote, need a bit more hazard analysis and should be clear to fly soon. Despite the regulatory delays, SpaceX seemed to be ready from a technical standpoint. It was at this time that Elon also mentioned a possible future for Starhopper after the 200-meter hop in the function as a vertical Raptor engine test stand. This, however, sadly never happened. Finally, after a long waiting game, Elon confirmed that a launch license was near, with a hop happening as early as Monday, August 26th. In a compromise with the FAA that ultimately may have saved Starhopper, the flight height was reduced from 200 to 150 meters in the final launch license, as well as a maximum propellant load of 30 metric tons. NSF's Jack Byer, that's me, filmed another indicator that the test was imminent, with the Reaction Control System, or RCS, thruster test on August 26th, just before the road closure started. When the road finally was closed and the pad was clear, everything was ready for the big test on Monday. The countdown progressed smoothly until the very last moment when a Raptor abort happened just before ignition. SpaceX confirmed on their own livestream of the event that the hop wouldn't happen that day and testing was scrubbed. The next day, the same procedure. SpaceX walked the vehicle through the countdown, but this time, the engine ignited as planned, and Starhopper came to life, with Raptor serial number 6 roaring beneath it. It ascended to 150 meters, did a small roll program, hovered over to the landing pad, and then gently descended. However, right before touchdown, the exhaust plume from the Raptor turned orange, as Raptor serial number 6 started what's known as engine-rich combustion, meaning the engine was burning parts of itself due to some kind of malfunction and thus was self-destructing. This resulted in a slightly hard landing, but that's still a huge success. Starhopper was still standing, in one piece, and had just completed a 150 meter hop. Starhopper was a test bed for the Raptor engine, and a pathfinder for some of the manufacturing and testing challenges that SpaceX would face in the subsequent stages of the Starship program. It proved its worth, and also resulted in the first ever flights of a full-flow staged combustion engine, a milestone that no engine of this kind had ever reached before. While it was never converted into a vertical Raptor test stand and didn't become a test bed for future Raptor engines, it's still standing at the launch site in Boca Chica. Its days of flying are over though, as now it has a career as a launch photographer, a host for many different sensors, a stand for lights, security cameras, communication antennas, and yes, bringing things full circle, it is also now used as a water tower. Starhopper was a major milestone and one of the first steps to a fully reusable orbital launch vehicle, which is key to someday supporting a meaningful, sustainable infrastructure on the moon, Mars, and beyond. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all the people who've supported this video with imagery. Special thanks to Mary, at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter, who provided a bunch of the content used in this video. And also thanks to Nomad, who let Tim, Everyday Astronaut, and I watch the testing and hops from his roof. Finally, Thanks to all the people in the NASA Spaceflight Forum who helped track and document the history of Starhopper.